So as a Salman al Farsi radiallahu an, he was a companion from Persia, and he was known, you know, he he's famous to be uh, uh, the originator of the trench project in the Battle of Khandak that the Prophet Sallallahu faced. Uh, he led the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions to victory by utilizing his the the ideas he had seen before coming to them, uh, before coming into Islam. Um, and he was given the title of being from the family of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu so who is he? He comes from Isfahan, a place called Jai. Um, and his family was very wealthy and very well off. And they were fire worshippers. And his specific job, Hazrat Salman's specific job, was to light that fire. So he would light the fire for people to worship. And one day, his father, a very wealthy man, sends him on a task to one of his estates. And he says, go to this estate, get this done, and come right back. Don't go anywhere else. He gives him very specific instructions. Because Azhar Salman always had this uh, way of questioning, you know, what, what he's doing in terms of religion. And, and so he goes, and, and, and as he's coming back, he sees this church, and he sees this, uh, uh, the worshiping going on, and, and he enters out of his curiosity. And that curiosity, uh, curiosity keeps him in that church for the rest of the night, learning the religion. He says, hey, this, this makes more sense than what I'm doing now, you know, more than fire worshiping. Um, and he accepts that religion. So he accepts that and goes back home, and obviously he tells his father, and what do you think happens? He's, he's raged. Um, he's raged, and, and he locks him up, so he can't leave anywhere. But long story short, he gets out of that, and he joins uh, one of the greatest priests at that time, at the, one of the bishops. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, there's a plan going on, and you do not know what, what's at the end of the tunnel, but it seems to be just this. So he serves this bishop, the greatest of their priests, but this man would take of charity and keep it hidden. No one knew except Salman of Farsi radiallahu anhu. Only he knew that this man was taking donations or charity and keeping them locked up in a room. And when he passed, Hazrat Salman al-Farsi could have become well off with that treasure, with that gain. But he went to the other bishops and told them that this man was doing this and this. And they didn't believe him until he took them to the treasure and said, here it is. And so they believed him. And, and then he goes on to find the next greatest bishop or priest to serve in his desire of finding, uh, finding the right... Uh, gaining knowledge or finding his uh, spiritual essence of the religion. And so he serves another bishop, he serves another priest, and when he pass, he's about to pass away and he asks him, who do I go to next? Who's the greatest one I can learn from? And he sends him, he's like, there's no one left, but there's one person in Turkey, go over there. He goes to that person, he serves him. This all goes around for about seven to eight years. He serves that man, that bishop, and when he's about to pass, he asks him, who do I go to next? And he responds, by God, I do not know anyone who has remained on the same path as I was on. But there's a man coming in the land, in the city of palm trees, which is Medina al Munawwara. And he's bringing, the, he's bringing a new revelation, the Abrahamic message um, at the time that was going to be Islam. And so he makes the intention to go there. And, and, and uh, so he takes his caravan towards the city of palm trees and he becomes a slave during that caravan. He gives everything away, all his wealth. Everything that he had, uh, they took it and they sold him as a slave. But he was content. Why? Because that slave master was taking him to the city of palm trees. That's where he resided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making this transition from one stage to another. And when he gets to Medina to Munawwara, he's working on one of the trees and this man comes to his slave master and says, this so-and-so person, which is our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is here spreading this message and a lot of people are going to him. They're, 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 they're changing their religion. And, and so Hazrat Salman Farsi jumps down from the tree that he's on with this excitement that this is the man. And, and the, the bishop that sent him to Medina, he gave him three signs to look out for, for this man. One was that he wasn't going to take of charity the beloved Prophet Sallallahu one that he will accept gifts, and number three, that he will have a seal of prophethood on his back, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, between his shoulders. And so that later that night, he takes some dates and he goes to where he heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. He goes there and, and he says, I've heard that your companions are, uh, they're in need of food. I brought some dates for you guys as sadqa, as charity. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes those dates, passes them around, but he doesn't eat it. So he looks at that, and he's like, sign number one, check. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't take of charity. Then the next day he comes back and brings the same dates again and says, this is a gift for you, O 
um, O Muhammad. And the Prophet takes that, eats the date, and then passes the rest to his companions. So sign number two, okay, done. Number three, now, now he thinks about how, how would he be able to see the seal of prophethood on the back of a beloved Prophet Sallallahu And so the Prophet says, I'm sitting one day with, with wearing a haram, like the two pieces of cloth. Um, the upper, it's, it's like a, the ihram, if you've seen that we were in Umrah. Um, he's sitting behind the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he's trying to like get an angle view, of, try to see the seal of prophethood. And the Prophet says, turns or, uh, just takes it off and says, is this what your, what your master had told you, the third sign that you're looking for? And Hazrat Salman Farsi Allah burst into tears and, and took his shahada, uh, bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad as his last messenger. And, and so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transitioned um, this, this destiny that he had to go through. He lost his family, right? He, he lost all his wealth in between. He became a slave. But he was content with the tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had that sabr. He had that. And that's what we have to look for in our lives.